in moments of time, we can make a difference for someone really well. We can either be really kind, really caring, or really loving, or it can be really difficult, really challenging, and really obstinate. The real question is, what is our intent? Is our intent to help people? Is our intent to challenge people? Is our intent to teach someone a lesson? If it's to teach someone a lesson, we really are going to have to stop ourselves and think, did God tell us that it is our responsibility to teach someone a lesson? Most of the time, not. The Lord in heaven really knows how to teach people lessons quite well. I learn quite regularly, actually all the time, from the Holy Spirit. They give me information on laws that I never knew anything about, and they give me information on how to remain safe in a world where people lie about their rights in other people's lives. We see that happening on a global scale. We see states trying to regulate people's bodies. We see physicians trying to harm people's records. We see lawyers trying to ruin people's lives. We see police trying to litigate people to death and into jail, and openly they do it because they simply don't like someone. They're missing out on all the evil of the world is pretty true, but they're per perpetrating some evils in this land is absolute truth. We have to be careful about what we talk about when we talk about police because in the olden times of Jesus' days, Jesus was often berated and be, be humbled, if you will, by police. Now that might not be the greatest word to say, but isn't it true that at Jesus' death there was police on the hand who were there ready to stab him? Very few of them converted, and as a matter of fact, only one or two actually converted in his death. You see, people often think they're doing the right thing by God's hand, but if it's not God's hand, how would they know? It's their hands, in truth. Man's hands moves mountains, not at all. The Lord's hands move men to try to help someone to move forward, absolutely. When someone tries to do something that's harmful to someone else, they are not on God's path. There is no passage in the Bible that says that it is our job to harm a person's life in the name of the Lord. And it's truly not our right to tell someone that they don't have a right to their own body, their own personhood, their own being, their own physicality, their own medical prescriptions, and their own rights in the land. When Christians try to do this to other people, particularly from when men try to do it to women, women have an outcry. They really know the Lord's path is not exactly true, but they recognize the rights violation. You see, there are international human rights laws that we often forget about. Many politicians don't talk about them enough as absolute truth. They also forget about civil rights, which we went through in the 70s. They forget about women, lib women libs movements, not at all. You see, when we're trying to elect a politician, we have to elect someone who understands the rights of all people, men and women, regardless of color. We also have to recognize that people have a right to their own personhood, which includes the areas that are really not political subjects, yet they seem to become a part of the political debate process, which I don't understand at all. You see, when we're talking about a person's private body, it's really not a public a debate or opinion situation. The only people who make it so are inappropriate politicians and law enforcement who illegally track someone by putting something in their being that is immoral. The Lord knows where everyone is is absolute truth. I've had this proven to me time and time again. But most people don't stop to listen to God. They simply try to do things, and they do it in their own way, and they try to fix things, and when they try to fix things, it makes it worse. I know that from first hand, that I've tried to fix something with someone for a long time, but it's been very difficult to get her to come on board. It's been very difficult to get her to even listen to one thing I have to say, and for all I know, the people who are violating my rights all day long have been impeded my technology so that when I try to make things right, she's not getting any message at all. The Lord led me to a place to see her the other day. The hardest part of that whole process was being told, doesn't the Lord provide you his promise? As I walked around the corner, rounded the bend, if you will, and saw her right there, the only words I could express was, oh my love, because that's how my soul feels. Now I produced a really great video series, actually three of them, a triptych, if you will, about love, and those three have been deleted off my internet YouTube channels by some monster who thinks they have the right to monster over my life. I'm constantly being pulled off a bench when I'm in the middle of sleep by police's absolute truth. I got awoken last this morning, actually, by some officer who just thought he'd call me out on the fact that I was on a bench. Then he wanted to illegally ask for my identification. There was no cause for that. The truth is he was being immoral by waking me up in my sleep. He was being a little bit illegal by the fact that he lied about who called and said I was a problem. And how is a person sleeping a problem in any way, shape, or form? This is not the first time this has happened to me. It happens to me on a regular basis that someone in law enforcement thinks that they should wake a man up who's fallen asleep. 
I'd like to see them do that to an elderly man and have his wife come over and just rip his ass. But that's my thought on the way that God should work in the world. You see, when we have pastors who don't do the right thing by people, then we have men who don't do the right thing by people, and we have women who participate in not doing the right thing by people. You see, we have a lot of people with a lot of wealth in the land, but they put their money overseas, they put their money into animals, which is their choice and their prerogative, but it doesn't prove they know God's love at all. You see, God's love is about helping people, it's about helping the homeless, it's about helping the underprivileged, and it's about helping people to be raised up to become more in life to honor the spirit and the soul that God has put in them. There's a wonderful film that talks about that, and I'm going to try and convince the director, who I believe is connected to me through LinkedIn, to produce that small clip for the world to see again, how God puts and breathes a soul into a parent's baby. It's really quite a fascinating little cartoon, and it really changed my life when I saw it. More people need to see that, I believe. Now, I am sort of old, and I am sort of tired, and I'm not quite as cheery as I once was. I'm talking softly because I'm in a library and I don't like to be stalked or worried upon by other people. The reality is that we have a moment of time to do different things for different people. And right now I'm looking for someone in particular who's supposed to come and help me to move forward in life. She's been lazy in her attempts. She's been challenging the Lord, saying, When it's snowing, I'll come. How many times has the guy made it snow during the spring this time? She needs to really think about that. How many different color shirts do I have to produce to prove that I'm the one? I don't know. But I'm wearing most all of them, and it's sort of sweating to death. But that's okay. It protects me from the monsters who keep getting in my pockets and monkeying around with me using audio tones. That's something that the nation has to be wary of, that they're using electronical tones through audio files and audio math systems and our tel cell phones, just as the Kingsman film talked about, to try to mob, monitor, and harass people. It's actually immoral. The Lord doesn't like it, and he may just take some of those people home because he's tired of them thinking they're going to lord over a person's life. In life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone, and right now I'm fighting, keeping my eyes open because of the horrible tone that is playing in the background in this room. I know that someone is doing it purposely, and I want it to stop. But when I talk about the reality of the truth of technological science that is used to harm people, people don't want to be mindful of the truth. That makes it really hard to stay awake, really hard to not look like I'm frowning, as my mother would say, and openly, it's sort of comical. I actually told her prophetically that if she didn't stop her monsterizing my life, that she would become ill. When I called to check on her yesterday, I learned she had been ill, she had had pneumonia, and she'd actually been in the hospital. No living relative of mine bothered to call me and tell me about my mother's illness. Isn't that interesting? The people who profess the name of the Lord wouldn't give their own sibling a call to say, Hey, mom's ill, you might want to come over, or something. Now whether I could have gotten there or not is another story altogether. But there are people in this land who don't think about the Lord's rights in other people's lives. They think they're going to change them, they think they're going to modify them, they think they can do some sort of conversion therapy, and the truth is, it's not the right to do. The Lord makes every soul, and people have to start paying attention to that. Now this, of course, has been someone from a good little company saying thanks for listening.